All right, it's now 22 minutes to 7 o'clock and uh, it's time for us to review the dailies this morning and just look at what's making headlines on the dailies. And joining me to have that conversation, I'm joined by Honorable Kipruto Arab Kirwa, who is the dep Deputy Party Leader for ANC. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. We're also expecting Honorable uh, Beatrice Elachi is going to be joining us as we continue with this conversation. But we'll still go ahead and start off with the dailies. And uh, on the standard, bribery claims... CSs invite Haji and Kinoti. This is, of course, following up the meeting that was held, the first meeting that was held by um, Honorable Dr. Matiangi with the CSs after he was given that responsibility of coordinating and ensuring that government projects are completed. But bribery claims now uh, coming to basically, you know, haunt the CSs, and this might be the reason, according to them, that some of the projects may have stalled. Well, I, I, I don't know much about it, but mm. um, what we know is that uh, the government is going through some kind of credit squeeze in terms of the availability of resources. Mm -hmm. And some is told because of that. Some is told because they were not properly conceived at the beginning mm -hmm. of time. And of course, if there are any bri uh, bribery claims, we are yet to confirm. And uh, we hope if there are any, the, the law will uh, take its own will course. Will take its course. Your your thoughts and your you you have been, worked in committees and in in you know in in uh, positions where you are um, you know as good as a CS. In terms of uh, the progress that you see now after the appointment of Dr. Matiangi and him calling you know all the CSs together, the president definitely focused on making sure that the big four you know stays on track mm -hmm. and is achieved. Do you feel like there is ground shifting towards that direction? Well, I have a strong belief that the president must have been frustrated by the speed with which uh, his agenda is being achieved, mm -hmm. and he wanted some kind of synergy because it is very clear it is the implementation, coordination, and uh, communication. Mm. Because the communication component is very important. You can be doing all these things, and if there is no communication, then the feedback is not, uh, is not felt. Mm. Because in any project implementation, there are various stages. And the most important stage is evaluation mm -hmm. to check whether you are on course. And if you are not on course, what are the reasons mitigating you moving off the target? Mm -hmm. And therefore, you go against those uh, reasons to ensure that you are on course. So I, I think what the president uh, did, and uh, in all fairness, mm -hmm. is the right thing for purposes of implementing uh, the projects uh, as, as fast as is possible. As possible. One would almost stop at wishing that this happened during his first term, because then, of course, the momentum by now would have been very good. Uh, do you feel it's uh, too little too late? Well, it may not be too late, because um, I'm sure the must have asked cabinet subcommittees, uh, because even this one I could see in a section of the media, they were reporting as if there is a cabinet meeting. Mm. That cannot be a cabinet meeting by the definition of our constitution. Mm. Because the cabinet meeting, the president and his deputy must be there. Must be present. So they must have been having subcommittees, mm. but uh, it's always uh, possible. I remember earlier on we started with our strategy in mm. Kibaki 1, mm. but later on we brought what we are calling rabbit results initiative mm -hmm. where we are measuring ourselves within 90 days mm -hmm. so that uh, you are able to take care of every segment every 90 days you evaluate yourself and you are setting the benchmarks which must be achievable and also practical mm -hmm. no too low no too high uh, you set them then you are measured against the benchmarks you've created and within 90 days, you can do evaluation. And see how and, far you are. Yes, and each department had what we are calling uh, a champion. Mm -hmm. Let's say if it's about department one, two, three. Each had a champion, championing that particular. Then the cumulative results, mm -hmm. the ministry is able to measure itself internally. Mm -hmm. And now we are measured overall within the government against other ministries. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll only hope and uh, wait to see whether the big four is going to actually stay on track and how that is going to happen. But also on the front page, there's a picture there, the front page of the standard, uh, leave Mombasa governor alone. And this is ODM members defending deputy party leader. This is, of course, after the war of words between uh, some um, 
um, MPs allied to the deputy president or thought to be allied to the deputy president and uh, this is a war of words with them accusing the governor of being on a wanted list on drug trafficking. <laughs> you know, Seri it, very serious accusation. It is very serious accusation and um, at times you see even some of some names also being being shown mm. that there will be certain leaders are wanted by Interpol. First of all, these are people allied to the government, mm. and therefore it is the on, owners of the government to make sure that if there is somebody who has uh, gone against the law, mm. that person is apprehended. Mm -hmm. So for people to pose, like the governor and the two MPs, or uh, three MPs, mm -hmm. to pose like they are now the champions of the deputy president, some of them are just playing to the gallery. Mm -hmm. What I've known with politicians, they position themselves so that all the time they are seen to be the defenders of the deputy president. Mm -hmm. Because why were they reacting to what uh, Joe said in Busia? They should have said this guy is bad from the beginning of time mm. and he should have been arrested by now. Mm. So it's really unfortunate that names of individuals are dragged into a situation almost every other day. The should, deputy shouldn't there be a law that uh, somehow restricts, if somebody makes such statements, they either qualify them or then they should also come and, uh, you know, arrest in some way in terms of uh, manipulation, um, um, what's it called, uh, maligning somebody's name. I think I'm happy that uh, Governor Joho has taken them to court so that we bring this matter to an end. Mm -hmm. You remember they did not only make that allegation but they called him other names mm -hmm. including uh, that uh, his qualifications are suspect mm -hmm. and yet the qualifications have been sort of validated by a court of law. Correct. Now if they have a problem they should have appealed at that time mm -hmm. against that particular validation of his qualifications. So this mass linking is something that as a nation we must learn to discipline ourselves. I may not like you but I should appreciate that your space mm -hmm. is not my space mm -hmm. and I must respect your social our social distance. And unfortunately it looks like politicians will always take advantage and use uh, any opportunity they have to malign which is why now shouldn't yeah the law come in and ensure it protects mm -hmm. people from uh, misuse of other people's names and also maligning and mudslinging their name. It's true. The law does exist. I think what we need to do is to implement the law and mm -hmm. for us to be vigilant. Say so that if I was to say anything against you, uh, you should not be waited for you to take me to court. Mm -hmm. The state even should also rein in to protect, uh, you. Yeah, to protect individuals. Because you see, once I mudsling you, uh, Michael, Whatever happens, the public will remember the first salvo mm. that I released against you. Mm. And therefore, your reputation has been brought down mm. by a certain measure. And at the end of the day, whether I'm, I'm convicted of, and uh, fined or jailed, mm. uh, it will not catch the same headlines as what I said against you at as the beginning. As what you said at the beginning. And at this point, allow me to uh, introduce and bring in Madam Beatrice Salachi. Good to have you. Uh, welcome aboard. And uh, we're just reviewing the <coughs> newspapers and maybe just to have your comments on uh, this uh, war of words that has been going on between um, people, some uh, members of parliament allied to the deputy president and the governor of Mombasa. Of course, with some very, very serious allegations that he's wanted by Interpol, he's a wanted man by Interpol on drug-related uh, issues, which, uh, of course, if they be true, then that uh, would be very serious. But if, they, if they're not true, it is also equally serious if somebody can go on national television and make such accusations and get away with it. Well, first of all, uh, thank you very much. And um, Happy New Year. Happy to New Year to you too. Oh, yeah, we've not met this year. <laughs> we've not met. <laughs> Um, I, I think one, it, it is unfortunate that uh, we, ha we, we as leaders can come out because of our political differences, decide to malign each other this way. And I think uh, when you talk about drugs, it's a very serious offense. Mm. And I would wish if uh, they have the documents, that they have uh, the letters from Interpol, uh, what they need to do is to present it to the country and uh, and I think then we follow the right route. Uh, for me, when you come out and you abuse each other, mm. yet all of us, I always say, the, the, the day Kenyans will understand, all of us have done wrong somewhere. Mm. And we are not good people, let's be honest. And we are also not uh, truthful, all of us, especially politicians. Mm. So we can't come out and kill each other 
because so and so is doing this now we have to look for the most dirtiest uh, as uh, I just had uh, Akira say when you talk about their papers we talked about them and because the, the institutions that are there cleared them then I have no business talking about it again mm -hmm. because that institution cleared and so we move on but now if we are going to bring our politics in the politics of drugs. Drugs is not for politics. Mm. Drugs is a serious offense. Mm. It's where our children, as some of our parents today, don't understand what they will do with their sons and daughters. Absolutely. And uh, it kills life. It's not something that you, you, you live and want to talk about it as a country mm. because you know the effects and, 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 and uh, those affected, how they feel. So for you, you are very lucky. You are not affected. But you want to make it a political issue. It's mm. not right. It's not right. It's and not and right. sometimes we are left wondering, Madam Melanchi, the question of what you leaders discuss when you're together. Because uh, when we hear some of these things coming out, we wonder whether, yeah. you know, what goes on in the back room. Because <laughs> when we have any, any leader sit here, yeah. they'll be very reasonable, they'll be very rational. Until another day you see somebody on screen and they say something and you wonder, what is it that, do you ever have these discussions and say, look guys, we are leaders, we are leading, our children are watching. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Our children are seeing what we're saying. Even if we are lying, and, and for instance, even if you take the governor, if that not be true, he has family. Yes. He has children. children. He has loved ones. Where do you yes. leave them after you've said all this? And, and, and then there, one thing I always ask, you know, we as a country also, as leaders, we come together, and then you say we have forgiven this, and we have said we are forging this, we are forging this road path, and therefore let's, let's move Kenya forward. Mm. And then we, the same, same leaders, will come on TV, and really we will talk some things. You're like, you're like are we in the same boat mm. that uh, the president has just requested us to move on? Because, mm. And I think those are some of the things that make the president so angry, because he asks himself, we have come together. You mm. still abuse each other on TV. Mm. You go, you abuse the former prime minister. Now you abuse Joho. You abuse the DP. He's wondering, really, are we on this track that I have said? Mm. Can we just tolerate each other? And as leaders, we can talk about all these drug things. We mm. can close ourselves somewhere and say, yeah, you did drugs. Mm. But we cannot just say you did drugs without having that. That evidence. Evidence. Honorable yes. Kirwa, in terms of the discussions in the back rooms, we find that politicians are very reasonable when you ask them to sit on a panel like this. But when you see them again on TV, you wonder what happened or what, what went wrong. Is it that political interest and stakes are so high to a point where we are willing to say and do anything? Well, possibly you moderate us, yeah. That's why we, we have some <laughs> bit of good manners. Decorum. <laughs> yeah. But the truth of the matter is that um, some of the guys know even that they are pretending. Uh, but they are playing to a certain constituency or a certain gallery. Mm. And, uh, but at times, even when... You know, Joho is not just any other governor at the coast. He's a very strong governor, a deputy party leader of a party, mm. a party that has been having a lot of presence at the coast. And therefore, those who are jostling for position in 2022 must be thinking on how to deal with him. Because don't be surprised, Michael, that um, in the next six months, you may find Joho now in the good books of the deputy president and his allies mm. and yeah. they will not talk about drugs again <laughs> absolutely so it is a bit it's oh, a bit God. of dirty politics mm. yeah. that we have entertained and that's why we are polarizing this country far too long mm. we don't spend time asking ourselves if i had won what would i be doing mm. for these people is michael doing what i would have been doing mm. and if you are doing i should support you absolutely. why should i be fighting you mm. I can fight you on other issues, mm. but on issues of performance, I would say Michael is doing very well, but I could have done better. But uh, don't spend a lot of time mudslinging whatever has been done. All right. And uh, it's a plea to our leaders really just to ensure that they uh, follow the Constitution, Chapter 6 of the Constitution on Leadership and Integrity. And some of those things leave Kenyans wondering what integrity we are talking about. But there's also a story on page 8 of the standard nurses slow return to work despite orders halting the strike. And as usual, when we have uh, the adage, the two bulls fighting, it's the people or the grass that suffers and this again is a time where Kenyans were suffering thank God that now they have been ordered to go back to work but 
Madam Elachi, do you feel that this has been resolved once and for all? Because this is something that has recurred so many times, and unfortunately, when it recurs, it is actually a matter of life and death. We may have some people who even may have lost their lives just yes. because of the few days where the nurses won't strike. You know, there are two things I think as women we are saying, and uh, I know within the proposals of Embrace we are saying, let us have a health commission, just the way we have a teacher service commission and the police commission. And let us rethink as a country that uh, issues of services and human life mm. are very critical. Now, when you just leave it, that each county can decide, as we will be doing this way, as we are able now to manage, it's not fair for now a Kenyan who pays taxes. Mm -hmm. And therefore, this is one function. We must sit down on a table as Kenyans and ask ourselves, is it better off back to the national government or is it better off still in the counties, but bring in institutions like the commission that can now be looking at really the, re the issues of remuneration, the issues of pension. For now, we are just fighting about remuneration. Mm. One day we're going to have a crisis of the pensions and of pension. the different counties. Reasons are we don't know whether they are remitting these pensions. Mm. If they are not able to remit NHIF, mm. even, uh, I mean, NHIF, NSSF, mm. how sure are you? Uh, our nurses will have their pensions. I've always said the issue of transfers of uh, uh, just the doctors. The, you find that you have to go through the county, mm. and uh, if a county cannot get a replacement, then you can't be transferred. Mm. So you're asking yourself, really, it is very unfortunate the way we have managed that health sector. Mm. And I think it's because of the constitution. We can't blame anyone. You can't blame the president. You can't blame the governors. But as a country, we can take it back to our referendum and ask this question and let Kenyans decide. If, and then the infrastructure can remain with the counties. Let them manage the infrastructure. But the services, and especially the human resource, has to come back to the national government. To the government. national government. And so as that much everyone feels we are mm. the same, that even if I'm taken to Makweni, mm. I am equal as a doctor who is serving in, in Kakamega or, or in Nairobi. Mm. Yes, because okay. even there, you find the packages have really changed. Mm. Those, who, they feel, we will pay you this. It's not right. It's but not as right. much as we may not blame the president or the governors and all that, isn't there a huge uh, vacuum in terms of leadership? Because you'd expect yes. that uh, by now. Because we are playing with the Constitution. Yes, and I'm able to uh, say it's not my obligation to mm. do that because the Constitution is clear. Mm. And therefore, that's why we are playing with the law. And the law has given us that room and that gap to play. So for me, we must rethink and let us just reorganize it. Uh, it's very unfortunate every day to see your, the person who you believe is the second God mm. after your God, that he or she is about to treat you to give you a life back. And yet, he's on the road, she's on the road. With placards. With placards. Mm. It means she comes and looks at you and she decides whether you live or not live. Mm. So that, those are some of the things. Uh, that Kibwa. incentive is very yeah. serious. Well, well I, I agree largely with uh, Mwishimua Elachi, uh, but uh, the most important thing is that devolution mm -hmm. was not properly midwifed because the schedules are there that uh, this is a devolved function. But there should have been a, a clear interface between the policy direction by the national government and the programs on the ground, so that you devolve the functions in terms of a provision of services to various units. Mm -hmm. You devolve procurement in terms of uh, procurement of, um, of drugs and other facilities <coughs> that are required. Mm. But you still remain with the overall policy program so that if you are training nurses nationally, you must ask your, yourself, how many are we, do we require nationally? Mm. Makweni, how many do we require? Garissa, uh, Bomet, and so forth. Th that is something that uh, we, we sort of left it to chance. Mm. If, even when we talk of various counties, it was devolution of money. But the human resource component and the midwifing of those uh, resources was not properly done. Mm. Finally, you know, at times you see as if there is like when Nakuru is on strike, the burden is not in Nakuru alone. It also goes to the outlying counties like County of Bomet, County of Baringo, mm. if they are not on strike. Mm. Because people from Nakuru will move we'll to those to counties move to those places, no? and burden 
the resources of that county, such that at the end of the day, uh, like uh, Governor Ruto, uh, former Governor Ruto, when he was, uh, he was effectively managing his resources, people came from Transmara, people came from uh, Kericho, and some came from Nakuru, and even Naro. Uh, to burden the resources of Bomet County. Mm. And when the strike was over, they went back to their own hospitals within their counties, and resources within Bomet County mm. were depleted by the upsurge of people coming. So it is really a national issue that we must relook really and do an audit of the Constitution mm -hmm. and schedules. All right, and we're going to be looking at the Constitution, and I know that Team Embrace are also um, basically making some demands on that particular constitutional review and waiting for the Building Bridges uh, team to uh, you know, be in Nairobi and have that done, but we're going to get to that. But let's quickly look at the Daily Nation headline, push and pull over Huru's new envoys. Interesting to see that some of these envoys have actually not reported to work yet despite the fact that they were uh, given the green light by Parliament to go ahead with the jobs. Uh, but again, the question is, why have they not reported and what's the issue? Although there are uh, indications that some of the countries that they have been you know, um, uh, attached to have rejected them because some of them were implicated in some corruption cases. Madam Elachi, is this a matter of concern? It is a matter of concern. I, I thought they have... Uh... I, I, reported. I, yeah, I thought they had reported. <laughs> but well, according I, to this article, but I don't know they... why you will reject Serem, and I don't know why you will reject Samuel Doita, mm -hmm. because for those two, I would uh, well, I don't know, but I will vote for them. Um, uh, I don't know uh, reasons why they have been rejected. Is it really because of uh, the integrity issues, or maybe uh, other other issues that may be diplomatic issues, uh, quiet? You know, we normally have this quiet diplomacy. Mm. Uh, well, they, they say that they uh, are yet to be commissioned by the president. Okay, so then I think maybe it's the president who the has... But then why, why um, appoint them, have them go through the vetting process, then, you know, delay to delay commission them? To commission mm. them is, uh, a big question. Or maybe question. he wants to finalize that whole process, and then when he's commissioning, you move all of you. Because I know there are some... Uh, regions that still need that still need yeah uh, i'm um, thinking that is why it has delayed okay uh, well that's my thinking on really Kiro, your thoughts on why the, the commissioning may have taken long after all it's him who you know um, proposed the names yeah th there are a number of uh, issues in terms of uh, diplomacy before you announce the name of an individual let's say michael vitonga mm. is going to be an ambassador in rwanda you must have sent isa Krimos in advance to the country that is going to serve. And they'll be able to accept, so that by the time you are announcing the name of the person, it's not a yeah. surprise It's not a surprise, surprise to the to country. Mm. Therefore, if the names were announced before those countries were notified by sending a criminals to them, then that was the first fault. Mm. Two, uh, um, I would have expected that if somebody's name has been mentioned negatively and even been taken to court, the president should have taken the earliest opportunity to withdraw that name mm. and also substitute with another name. Uh, otherwise, it, it is not really good manners that uh, you are sending somebody. He may be a clean person, mm. but let the person go through the, the rigmarole of the, of, the, of the due process. And if he's clean, there are many other opportunities that will arise in due course, and you will get the opportunity to serve the country. All right, we'll wait and hear what the delay might be, and uh, that's where we wind up our newspaper review. Now, when we come back, it's time for the State of the Nation, and there has been push and pull of the constitutional review. There are many who agree that the Constitution does need to be reviewed, but the question is, what are some of the areas that need to be reviewed? And we do know that Team Embrace has come out very, very strong uh, to point out some of the things that they feel need to be addressed. One of those being the two-thirds gender bill. Remember in November last year, it was supposed to go through, but it did not go through. Now there is a push and there is a question as to whether we should even go 50-50. Is that possible? Is that a piped dream or is it a reality that can actually happen? We're going to be having that discussion right here on Morning Express. For now, we take that break. When we come back, it's time for the State of the Nation. This is KTN News.